Hi, my name is CJ. In this series of videos, I'm going to be unboxing, building, and racing a two-wheel drive buggy in the spec class. And I have chosen the TLR 22DC Elite version. Uh, this is a fantastic kit. Um, you can tune it and adjust it to run spec, you could run carpet, you can run outdoor dirt, you can run indoor clay. You can pretty much do anything you want with it. Some people are even buying these kits and converting them into uh, drag race cars. Um, they have a lot of potential in all different directions. And what's really amazing about them is that for the price, which is a little higher than some kits, but it's not as high as some of the uh, you know kits like uh, uh, Kyosho or Yokomo, um, uh, certainly less expensive than X-Ray. It comes with so many high-end parts. For example, it comes with titanium turnbuckles. That's something you just never see in a kit. It comes with a, a lot of carbon fiber parts. Uh, the shock towers are carbon fiber. There's a carbon fiber mounting plate for your uh, receiver or speed controller. Um, there is a lot of aluminum. The, uh, the steering rack is all aluminum parts. You don't have to upgrade any of those items. Um, the uh, rear suspension mounting points are anodized aluminum. The rear hubs are anodized aluminum. Um, there's just so many high-end pieces that are included in this kit. Uh, you're probably getting, you know, the difference between a, a base kit that doesn't have all those extra options and the cost of this kit, you're probably getting two to almost three times that much in extra parts. The turnbuckles alone, titanium turnbuckles usually run $35 to $40 plus. So it's, it's a huge savings and uh, right out of the box you get a kit that you can, you know, motor speed controller, receiver, go race, be competitive, um, you know, good shock absorbers, everything is top of the line and there's just so many extras. So um, I thought I would uh, do some spec class racing this winter. And uh, that means a 17.5 turn motor. If I were running mod, most buggies are running a 7.5 turn motor, a lot faster, a uh, lot more aggressive racing. And I just thought I'd start out with spec. It's been a while since I've run two wheel buggy. And uh, so that was just my decision on that and going in that direction. Um, it's not much less expensive to run spec these days because spec allows you to still do a lot of mods to the car as far as chassis stuff and the cars as you can see are already so high-end out of the box that you know they they couldn't go well you can't run the titanium turnbuckles because they come with the kit how can they you know take the car out of the spec class because of something like that that's packaged with the car so it's spec is really about motor versus any anything else of course there's you know things with timing and, and having to run a blinky uh, speed controller or things like that that do also slightly limit that spec class, but it's, it's not the same. Anyway, um, it's going to be a lot of fun and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I hope you guys really enjoy the build. I'm going to try to uh, video some of these races, um, certainly try to video some of the practice sessions and kind of show you how I'm tuning the car. Uh, talk about different ways to get a good build going and uh, how to make the car faster. And as you may have noticed, I, I do tend to do some videotaping of my races and I go back and analyze that footage and try to see what the car is doing. And I'm going to try to get some, you know, closer footage. Uh, one of the things that I um, have uh, gotten recently is another GoPro. I went with the latest model so that I've got 5k and that has come in handy because when you're filming you're, you tend to be a, a bit of a distance from the car and if you're filming in an ultra high resolution you can zoom that footage in and you know make the car a lot larger on screen yet still have a lot of resolution going so you can kind of see what the car is doing better and um, I'm hoping I can get uh, someone to come with me and uh, film trackside and uh, kind of catch the car going through different types of turns, 
uh, things like where you've got a transition where you're doing like a left to right and you want to see what the car is really doing what that suspension is up to and you know is there any way to improve that is the car balanced well and I mean you know things like um, like if you've got a lot of oversteer you know the rear ends passing the front end in the turn okay that's a pretty easy thing to see and figure out you know different things you can do about that but if the car just doesn't seem to be as fast as you want you're having trouble controlling turns like I said like a transition where you've got a, a, a fast S turn and you're you're losing control of the car and you can't really figure out what it is it's, it doesn't seem to be pushing it doesn't seem to be um, oversteering it, it just seems to you know you're just losing it and being able to film that watch that you know hopefully close enough up at a high resolution that zoomed in you can really see what that suspension is doing and try to get a uh, a feel for you know okay what is the right fix for this and uh, so we'll see how it goes um, you never know I could put the car together out of the box do a basic setup on it and not really have a lot of problems to show you so <laughs> We'll just see what happens, but that's part of the fun of all this anyway. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is going to be kind of an unboxing and uh, what parts I'm putting on this to the, you know, off the bat, you know, what things I picked up along with the kit. And then over the uh, series of uh, the first handful of videos, I'm going to be doing the build and showing you how I build it. Uh, little tricks, you know, along the way, things like, uh, you know, diff building, breaking in the diff properly. Uh, etc. So I hope you like it. Okay, so let's start with uh, the add-on items. Um, simple item here, an aluminum servo horn, uh, clamping, 25 tooth, uh, TLR product. This is a set of M4 low profile wheel nuts. Um, one of the things I'm going to try to do is reduce unsprung weight as much as possible unsprung weight uh, is kind of the bane of suspension and of race cars in particular uh, any weight that is outboard from your your kingpins on your suspension your arms um, everything except for the shock absorbers because the shocks are also attached to the chassis um, so things like uh, turnbuckles um, steering knuckles uh, the outer king pins, the axles, the wheels and the tires, all of that is unsprung weight. It's the, the chassis itself is what's sprung. Um, does that make sense? I hope. Um, the less unsprung weight you have, the more rapidly the suspension can react. The more quickly it can go over a bump and recover. So that has a dramatic effect on the car's ability to handle especially rough terrain for off-road cars and cars that run at high speed unsprung weight is very important and you want to try to minimize it as much as possible so this is a set of very light nuts that will replace the stock wheel nuts that come with the kit uh, another TLR product it's basically uh, X rings and shock cap gaskets um, these are spares. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of shock building and tuning and sometimes these get damaged and I wanted to have replacements on hand. Six dollars, maybe five dollars, it's worth getting. Uh, another TLR product, front and rear sway bar kits. Um, I forget whether these do or do not come with a sway bar. I think they might come with a rear, uh, but they're only going to come with one. Uh, this gives a variety of spring rates for the rear and front sway bars. Uh, this is just a, uh, a little add-on item. It basically is a pair of titanium screws and a, uh, they call it a, a washer. It's basically a, a wing button also. Uh, it goes on top of your wing. Uh, the large flat surface helps keep the wing from deforming or bending. And I'm also going to be using a, uh, a spacer that goes underneath the wing. I don't have that at the moment. Uh, that'll add uh, two and a half to five millimeters of, uh, of space. Raise the wing a little bit so that the, uh, the rear tire uh, at max uh, can't contact and rub against the wing. <clears throat> okay. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, ceramic differential balls and a, uh, a set of caged ceramic 
thrust bearing balls. And uh, these ball bearings are just fantastic. They're super smooth. Um, they make a, a really big difference, especially in, in ball diffs. Um, if you've ever built a, a ball diff with ceramics, you know what I mean. Uh, they're just buttery smooth and you get a, a really nice uh, ball diff feel. I may also be running a gear diff at times. I have one already uh, that fits this chassis, so we'll see how that goes. Um, this is uh, to help lighten up that front end. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's a set of uh, titanium kingpin screws, and it's for any of the TLR kits. Uh, Lunsford makes some really nice titanium hardware. I'm going to be using titanium hardware throughout the build of this kit in as many places I can, especially high places, any place that's, um, you know, ab above the chassis pan. Uh, that will reduce uh, weight up high. It lowers the center of gravity of the vehicle. For example, the screws that are up here, those come titanium to begin with. Um, things like that. They're, this kit really is just packed with goodies. <clears throat> I'm going to be using an existing speed control that I already have. It's a Tekken RS Gen 2. It's a good, reliable speed controller. I've had it for a while on a couple of different cars and uh, it's never failed me. So looks a little ugly at the moment because it's got some uh, uh, liquid gasket on it, but um, it'll clean up just fine. And here is the motor. It's a Tekken Gen 4 uh, Redline Spec R, a the 17.5 turn, which is the fastest motor that you can put in these. Not that this is the fastest 17.5. Um, I had my eye on some other motor choices, but I wasn't able to get them. They were out of stock, and I may change up the motor. I just want to see how this one goes. Um, I've had good luck with Tekken products in the past. There shouldn't be anything wrong with this motor. Um, and, you know, I'm not the fastest racer in the world anyway, so I think I'll do just fine with this. Now, this kit does come with a set of wheels. A lot of kits don't even give you wheels these days. Um, TLR makes their own wheels, so they provided a set, and I have a second set, which I went ahead and ordered, uh, because I've got a couple of sets of tires coming in. I'm not going to start with a huge array of tires. I'm basically going to bring two sets of tires with me. Uh, one is a, one set is a, a web type set. Um, I believe it's the, uh, the protons and the, um, the electrons for the front. Um, and uh, for the other set of, uh, of wheels, I'm running a set of tires that are virtually a slick. I'll go ahead and pull one out for you. Uh, these are the J Concepts Octagons. Um, I have these for my uh, off-road buggy as well, uh, my A-Scale and my uh, short course truck. And uh, these do really good on indoor clay tracks. There's almost no tread. And, you know, once you kind of, uh, you know, sauce them up and wear them in a bit, um, they're practically a complete slick. And that just works great on, on you know, indoor groomed hard pack uh, clay tracks where, you know, you, you just don't need a bunch of tread. You, you need a sticky slick. And I've got the same, like I said, the same tread pattern for the front tire. It's just narrower, 2.2 inch uh, rims. So nice and simple. Um, I've got a lot of work to do this week because I've got to build this and film this all for you guys because uh, first race is on Saturday. So uh, let's pop open the box without further ado. Personally, I've always liked building TLR products. Um, their kits just seem to always go together easily. Um, the instructions are good. I love that they give you a pre-cut body. That's just one less thing you don't need to worry about. Trying to trim these tight corners can kind of be a pain in the neck sometimes. Um, they've done everything but uh, do the holes for you. And uh, 
that's easy enough with a, a body hole reamer. Um, they also bag everything up very nicely. Everything's very organized. Um, you know, everything in its place kind of, uh, kind of way of doing things. Just to, you know, show you some of the things that they've given us. Um, the, uh, the motor mount, uh, the motor plate is this nice black anodized silver chamfered edge uh, with, uh, with cooling fins uh, cut into the aluminum on the inner surface. I mean, they've just really gone out of their way to give you every single bonus part that they have for the 22 line of cars uh, in this Elite kit. Um, it's got the little front wing, it's got the big rear wing. Um, here's our rear. The front one was in here. And, you know, everything, you know, comes in its own bag. The suspension is incredibly adjustable now. Um, we have the ability to adjust the axle height at the transmission uh, by raising and lowering the differential. We have the ability to raise it at the hubs as well. Um, we can adjust camber and toe and roll center all by swapping out some little items. So you don't have to buy a whole bunch of uh, special motor plates or, or suspension mounting plates for the rear of the car at $30 a pop. You just pull the one that's on there off, you swap out the little grommets, you get your new adjustment, you're off to testing. It, it's just fantastic. Here's some of our nice carbon fiber parts with our uh, titanium shock mounts. It's all looks like most of the front end suspension's all right here in one bag. Let's see. That looks like rear suspension. Yep, that's all rear suspension. More more of these beautiful black anodized aluminum pieces. Uh, I can't wait to start putting this together um, because it just looks so nice. The images that I've seen of these um, with these black anodized parts are just beautiful. Here we have, uh, this is bag D. We've got suspension swing arms. We've got our rails. Another thing about the low kits is that they've done so much testing and evolving for their different types of conditions. You know, they've got their carpet version. They've got the outdoor, you know, dirt and clay version. Um, they've got this uh, type of plastic that they call a uh, stifsel, I think is the way they pronounce it. In any event, these, uh, these rails right here that go down the side of the chassis, okay, there are three different stiffnesses of rails. There's the soft, plastic, there's the standard plastic rail, and then there's the stiffsel rail. And depending on which of those you use can really change up the car and how it feels. You can feel really loose and almost disconnected. And some people have actually complained and it's like, well, did you change your, your chassis rails? Also the waterfall that connects, um, it's kind of like this, uh, well, it looks like a waterfall. It's, it's this uh, curved plastic piece that goes from the suspension down onto the chassis behind the battery. And that is also available in at least two or three stiffnesses of plastic. Between that piece and the rails, you can really change how the car feels. You can make it really soft and plush uh, and on rough tracks and stuff, that's going to just be, you know, the kind of thing you want. And if, if you're running indoors on carpet, and you want this thing to be dialed in like an on-road race car, you put in those stiffsel rails, you put in a stiffsel uh, waterfall, um, you know, you can also, you've got uh, choices in the uh, suspension arms as well as far as stiffness goes. Um, there's several of those to choose from. So you can really dial this car in. And just as an example, those, the rails um, the, are, are like $9, $10. I think they were $10.99 maybe for the stiffsels. You know, if you, it, $20 worth of plastic and you can totally change the, the complexion of the vehicle. Okay, here we have shocks. They've given us two different grades of shock oil. Um, I'm gonna determine what my build is gonna be. I've got some build sheet examples that I'm gonna, uh, I've been looking at and um, 
That's another thing is that I've, I don't think I've ever seen more publicly available build sheets from professional racers than I have from TLR. And here we have a nice thick book of instructions and an assortment of little body parts and tools and our stickers and some boilerplate about the vehicle. And uh, so that's basically it. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, sit down, review the instructions a little bit and then I'm gonna start into the assembly. I'm gonna take you through the whole process, every nut and bolt. I'm gonna to talk to you about my build, how I'm deciding on my initial build. Um, I have kind of a methodology that I go through with every vehicle, uh, that every vehicle that I race at least, um, where I will try to find as much information as I can about other people's setups. Uh, and the type of tracks that they run them on and what seems to work. And then I'll take all of that information and I'll kind of go through it and look for the commonalities. Like, okay, everybody who runs on clay is running slicks or they're running a pin tire that is just ground down to a, almost a slick. Okay, good thing to know. Um, don't buy a bunch of uh, heavy web tires. And if you do, you know, take some sandpaper to them and, and take them down to almost slick. Um, you know, things like that, uh, positions, you know, because this is such an adjustable car, uh, you can kind of get lost as to, you know, what's the best buildup. And so, you know, um, people like, you know, Dakota Fend probably has a half dozen different build sheets, uh, online available free for download. Um, there's a handful of pro drivers that have put up their build sheets and you can, you know, let's say your local track is an indoor clay track which is what i'm looking at um, i've got two indoor tracks in my area um, they're both about an hour away from me in opposite directions so that's where i'm going to be doing my winter racing i might try to get to a carpet track for you guys um, i've never run on carpet i'd like to talk about that and uh, give you guys information about that what it's like um, i'm sure it's an interesting uh bunch of changes that you kind of got to do to the car it's probably similar tires to what i'm going to be running on the clay as far as like a very slick tire probably a narrower front tire though um so you don't end up doing a lot of traction rolling uh because it is an incredibly high grip environment from what i hear uh but that'll be interesting to get into down the line also that would be one of the places i would definitely run the gear diff versus the ball diff um so anyway I'll go through those build sheets and I'll, you know, go through, I'll find all the ones that their track describes the track that I'm going to be racing at. And then I'll, like I said, I'll go through, I'll look for the commonalities, you know, okay, everyone's using this basic, you know, shock position. They're, they're putting their camber links like this and I'll draw up my own sheet. Um, you know, one of the first things I do when I you know, I, I'd sometimes I do this before I've even seen the kit, you know, I'll order the car, like I ordered this one and, you know, be before, before the internet connection was cold, I was already downloading uh, a whole bunch of, of build sheets and running a bunch of blank ones off the printer. Um, you know, you, down, you download that uh, editable sheet um, that, uh, you know, I'll keep on a, a tablet with me, but Usually I just go pen and paper um, because it never fails. Uh, you know, you could forget your laptop, the battery could go dead. Having the editable sheet is nice for, you know, after the fact, uh, like after you've had a good race, you've made a bunch of changes, you've got a setup you really like for a certain kind of conditions. And that's a good time to sit down with the PDF and, you know, edit all the fields in a nice font and, and uh, have a nice looking uh, build sheet to work from. Um, you know, late, you know, fill in every little blank. But when I'm doing a basic setup, I kind of, you know, end up scratching stuff out and changing things. And uh, especially once you get to the track, you know, once you've scribbled out a few too many things, it's time to pull out a clean one and uh, start over. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get all that information together and then I kind of figure out, okay, you know, What's, what is everybody using? What, it, what seems to work well 
together and you kind of look at you know who's who's got the best overall setup going you kind of combine the numbers together and you get yourself a a decent setup that is probably a good starting point you're going to need to make it yours you're going to need to uh, adjust it to the way you like to drive but it's a great way to kind of give yourself a jump start um, you know if everybody's running if everybody who runs on clay is running the green rear spring or the white rear spring or the blue front spring you know if, if 75 percent of them are running that particular spring that's the spring you want to start with you might change but it's a good thing that you know it's a you know they've they've tried they've tried every spring they've got and that's the one that they like and you know they're these are people who drive all day every day that's it's what they do for a living so um if if it feels weird to you at first you're better off probably trying to drive to, learning to drive to get used to it because it's probably a faster setup regardless of whether you think you like it or not kind of situation so that's always something to bear in mind too what you think feels good or looks good on the track like you know being able to you know have a lot of oversteer so you can snap it around turns and then uh you know kind of a point and shoot style that may not actually turn out to be fast it may look good and you may be able to beat a few people at a local track but if it comes down to um you know a a, a bigger race with more professional drivers that you go to uh you might find that you're really not on pace and uh so um you know if if you can get you know, it's it's just such a nice thing in our hobby that we get these examples of, you know, here's how I set up my car. Here are the parts that I put on it, you know, the, the different weights that they used, which tires they're running, this is the fluid I'm using, um, you know, I trimmed this, I added that. All that information is is yours for the taking, and it, it's just a waste not to, to use all that up front, put it in your build, your initial build, um, and uh, get that that head start going so um, on with the build I hope you enjoyed this video please click like please subscribe guys I need subscribers really bad if you value what I'm doing if you like my videos and you're enjoying them please tell your friends um, if you go onto a forum or something post up a little note hey you know this guy's doing these really nice car videos you should check out his channel um, I need the growth. I'm doing all this out of my own pocket on my own time, and I need your help, guys. Thanks a lot.